I've been interested also to see how uh, Carolyn Kennedy will be handled and if she'll be handled with uh, kid gloves or if, if she will be under such a microscope. As we watch that, we will perhaps be able to prove that there is uh, a class issue here also that was um, uh, such a factor in the scrutiny of my candidacy. All right, well, she's back in a brand new web video. Sarah Palin targeted Caroline Kennedy, blasting the mainstream media, even zinging Katie Cork. And guess who's got her back? Ann Coulter, the author of Guilty, just came out already on the bestseller list. Ann, good to have you. Thank you. Good to be here. Where are you, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Washington, Ann. All right, so you, you know, you don't, you don't even know when you do so many of these interviews, Ann, you don't know. Okay. Um, but, Ann, let me ask you, uh, she's talking about this double standard, that the treatment of Caroline Kennedy versus the, the, the treatment of her uh, 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 on, on these basic, uh, I don't know, English issues. What do you make of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, though, I, I, I mean, that isn't even as good a comparison as the many I have in my book. Um, I mean, I suppose they could say Caroline Kennedy is merely being um, appointed to the Senate, whereas Sarah Palin would have been a heartbeat away from the presidency, exactly where we wanted her. Um, I compare her treatment to the treatment of n not only her actual counterpart, Joe Biden, but to the next leader of the free world, and that's pretty shocking. They have reporters parachuting into Wasilla, Alaska to find out, to talk to all of Sarah Palin's friends and neighbors, check with the town librarian on whether she was banning books. And meanwhile, I mean, look at everything coming out of Chicago now. Now, this is the environment Obama came out of. Maybe we could have had a little more reporting on his pals, Governor Blagojevich, um, Tony Rezko, Syrian nationalist, um, his friend Eric Whitaker back when he was running for president rather than now. But does it do her any good, though, at, at this stage of the game? You know, you can always criticize the media, you know, how they uh, the, the treat Democrats as Republicans, those they favor as those they don't. It always seems to me, though, and to be a zero-sum game. And what's, what's a zero-sum game? that you're wasting your time whining about it. Um, I don't think that's what a zero-sum game is, Neil. <laughs> a zero-sum well, game is one person wins to the extent the other person there's a difference. loses. Yeah, but there's a difference between someone like you who can make best-selling books out of it and someone like Sarah Palin, who presumably still thinks she has a political future and will then blame the media if, if somehow that future is stymied, um, right? Look, I don't know. I mean, she commented on it. I think it's worth raising. We're talking about it now. And like I say, I covered it extensively in my book. They went after Sarah Palin and her family members, accusing her son falsely of having been a juvenile delinquent, defacing, um, vandalizing school buses. That's a lie. Um, her Iraqi-bound son, I might add, they accused her of having mm -hmm. an affair with a business point, partner. They said, you know, they first accused her of faking her pregnancy and then gleefully reported on the unwed pregnancy of her daughter. Meanwhile, um, Obama's running mate, Joe Biden, um, he, both his brother and son, as long as we're looking at family members, actually were sur sued for fraud by a business partner for defrauding him out of millions of dollars. The, the actual next vice president, as opposed to a vice presidential candidate, um, the New York Times had not reported that as of election day. The Washington Post put it on page A18. Um, I think people do need to know things like that. I don't think most Americans know that at Sarah Palin's uh, con convention, speech at the Republican National Convention, probably the most important political speech in a decade, her introduction to the nation, and a knockout speech, I might add, that huge Obama fundraisers stood up during that speech, screaming their heads off and storming the stage. Uh, two newspapers reported that, two local newspapers. Uh, you think it would have been reported if big McCain supporters had stood up at an, uh, during Obama's convention speech and started screaming bloody murder and storming the stage? I think that would have made news. All right, let, let me... <laughs> Let me switch gears a little bit. I had John McCain here earlier, and he was sort of saying that it is our duty now, and he's talking about all Americans, including Republicans, to uh, work with the president-elect and presumably support this stimulus measure. Of course, they can debate some of the details, but he seemed to be saying that Republicans could could look, you know, like obstructionists if if, if they if they object to everything that Barack Obama does. What do you make of that? 
Um, I don't think the Republicans should be taking advice from John McCain. Um, I don't really know much about what's going on right now because this book did come out Tuesday, so I don't know anything in the details of the stimulus plan, but I think um, it's pretty clear from the last election the voters want Republicans to be Republicans. Um, and again, back to the book that came out three days ago, um, I think it doesn't matter what Republicans do. What they ought to learn uh, from the way the media treats similarly situated Democrats and Republicans, they may as well just do the right thing because the media is going to scream bloody murder about them no matter what they do, no matter how sainted they are. And by the way, no matter how moderate and Democrat they are, as in the case of John McCain. I mean, look, at he was the, de the media's favorite Republican until he ran against the golden boy Obama. And then it was over. Then Ann Coulter, thank you very much. Always good seeing you. Good to see you, Neil.